Hello everybody, my name is Trollmaker, and this is the War Game Cup. You might have noticed that I've now joined TGN. It doesn't change much. Uh, new branding. I don't have to take care of as much myself. That's the big part. Um, all the money I've been making from this channel actually donate to a local shelter, so it doesn't change too much for me. It just makes my life easier for me. However, this is my TGN debut, and so with that in mind, we are going to see a War Game Cup match. For players new to the game, two sides. The first is NATO, and NATO player here will be Ozimu. Or just Ozamu. And our pack player will be Demone! Spelt kind of like Demone. And since we have a slightly different viewership now, if you don't understand anything I'm talking about, buy the game. It's actually a very excellent game. They gave like four free DLCs, including a full campaign extra campaign, so it's it's definitely worthwhile buy, even when it's not on sale anymore. And uh, Ozumu, interestingly enough, going to go for this multi-rocket launcher. Just one is actually quite good as an opening because it can change battles by creating stuns, by creating routes, massive demoralization. If you can time this very specifically and very well, attacks will do very well because of it. The downside is that it's going to cost you quite a bit of supply, and that supply command points. And uh, because of that, you're going to be behind on actual army count. Because that's not actually a part of your army. It is something that if it dies, you die. Kind of like a command number to me. Uh, so from Demone, we're going to see some T-80s. A lot, like a lot of actually very expensive tanks. Very unusual for pack players to get these. Lots of infantry, tons of infantry. These spows here, SBWs, and these BTR 65s, all gonna be infantry. And um, a couple of flampers, a flamethrower tanks, the TO 55. And uh, from from uh, Ozumu, we're seeing uh, lots of uh, anti tank weaponry. And actually, a nice little flock of gazelles here. Uh, this is a very good combination. I suggest pretty much everybody do this all the time. It's always just great. Have two to four gazelles, have a recon. It's specifically good on this map because it's so large and open and there's so many giant gaps in between the bases. You have lots of great opportunities to use this. On a map like, uh, say, Hell's Highway, not so good. By the way, if you didn't know, this is Blitz. Blitz. A few things about the map that are pretty important. Each one of these bridges is going to be an entry point into the enemy's entire area. Everything outside of these few forests and this town or so is pretty well open area. So once you're able to get across the bridge, which means running into this location, you can pretty much steamroll through with tanks, anti-aircraft, and anti-tank weapons. So there's an important little note, and as we're starting off the map, uh, looks like we're going to see uh, maybe a little bit of a rush here from Demone. Going to use a lot of these big tanks, and he's got uh, actually some quite expensive recon here as well. And he might lose the recon, the actual expensive recon. These helicopters are like 85, 90 apiece, and he actually might pull back in time. Oh, just barely dies, and there we go. Black Hawk down. Is that like a... No, there's nobody there. No survivors of this crash. Very good snipe here from Ozumu. And he takes an 85 point lead because of that. We can see with uh, with Demone, he's going to try and take Gulf. And he's going to maintain Delta. Playing very, very safe. And with Ozumu, he's actually going to go for Echo. And he's going to go for the middle. He's going for Charlie. And this is the high money play. This is 7 points for 2 commands. Compared to this, this is three points for two commands. And once again, if you're new to the game, the number over the name of the territory will tell you how much each point is worth. You will gain five points per five seconds for this one, two points per five seconds for this one. And so strategically, it's very good to keep this point. However, usually the higher the point, 
the harder it is to maintain. And we can see Uzumu. I see what's a Japanese name. It's gonna have a couple of infantry here. Might be able to slow this down a bit. But already we can see the open giant fire. Lots of helicopters are gonna get smashed here. The recon actually goes down. That was a pretty key unit. And suddenly Demone is now doubled in points. Another rocket go shoots and fires. Also, any kind of rocket based unit has an insanely high range. That's a simple thing. They do very, very well against just about everything. And so, now with all these anti aircraft vehicles. Oh, he's gonna restock it. Never mind. Somewhat of an opportunity there for Uzumu, but he didn't take it. Didn't see it, didn't know about it. No worries. Refueling up all his vehicles at this point. He probably is gonna go for some sort of move. Um. Mizumu does not see exactly what's coming. Demone also has no idea of what's ahead. Note that also Azumu has some of these moderate VTSIs, so he should be relatively fine. And he's got lots of toes here, so this side swiping attack probably won't do too much. But here we go, he's actually going for it. He's on the move fast command, which means he's traveling on the all important road. And this could be room for a big mistake. Of course, if he goes to the jungle, he will engage the infantry, and that could be a problem. The tanks are winding up, however, and getting their sh few shots off on these this random VAB. Oh, that's not a good target at all. The toes are going to sideswipe, actually going to get a side angle shot, which is very, very hard to do when a, an enemy is actually engaging for the front. And he's going to keep going for it. Demone has three, six infantry coming up. T-72 is trying to cover this advance, firing at the Shah, so he's not worried about the toe right now. The toe, of course, insanely high damage, very low ammunition. Ooh, that was a good hit, but he needs to get another one like that. T-72 is soaking up that damage. The recon, reconning, looking at the Demone cam, he doesn't actually see too much. He does see the Marger BTSIs in the distance. He is going to probably capture this woods, though. Moto Strelkis able to defeat these shots. He's actually going to pull back these, these Malans, these anti-tank guns, um, just because he doesn't really have anything to deal with that. What is going on here? And actually another Spoo just arrived straight through the middle. And anti-tank gun squads are not cheap. And it looks like he will in fact lose it. He does lose one Spoo, two Spoos. Lots of infantry lost. And it looks like he will in fact lose his anti-tank squad. The rockets are firing on this location, doing lots of stun damage. But just kind of late. He really needed it on these tanks. Rockets are used against tanks. And in fact, the Milan team will go down. And... Zoom was in a lot of trouble. He's pulling back a lot of these anti-tank weapons, these chaparnels. How the hell you pronounce that? Chap Ara. Chaparral. Chaparral. That's a French word. Chaparral. Cheveux chaparral. Alright, so we're seeing something unusual. Generally speaking, you do not want tanks to be in jungles. They snare very easily in the jungles, they slow down, they break down. They are not very good in close quarters combat. However, with this given situation, we have an interesting one because it's a martyr VTSI. And he's actually going to try and use the jungle to get closer. And he's winding up. Note, he's attacking. He's on the side. This allows for the martyr VTSI to get maximum damage against these tanks. These are T-72s. They're particularly rare because they're so expensive. Every time one of these things dies, ooh, there's like a baby dying. And actually, some VABs sliding in here for Ozumu. He's kind of feeling the crunch here. And where is this? Oh my god. Infantry are actually going to land on this location. There is a commander over here for Demone. Totally missed that. That's a pretty key part. Looks like it will clean up the rocket fire. Not doing too much there. Tanks will be cleaning up. He's got to pull back the T-72 very quickly. This is where Micro counts. And he pulls it back, but just not in time. The shots from Famas are able to get off that critical rocket grenade combination that just wipes out anything. And this is why you want your infantry in the jungles. Rocket goes off the T-72. He's only got four hit points left. He could really use a supply truck right now to restore all that health. All the while, the Motos Cherokee are in the jungle. They slowly want into their way forward. The T-72 is mostly tearing apart the shots of Famas. And here comes a toe in the distance, and we also see some gazelles firing from a much, much longer way. The multi-rocket launcher is actually showering this location. Doesn't actually hit anything, though. The T-72 going to escape, looks like. And all the while, Moto Strelki are moving through the jungle. 
into a nice key location. He will be able to move up and do quite a bit of damage. He's moving out into the open. He's moving to a less secure forested location. Some weird pixelation here. Maybe something for Yuja in the fix in air land battles. And here comes 25 Motos Jurakis. Closing in. He's actually going to pull the murder of ETSI back. He probably has to pull back all of this. And the commander is actually very vulnerable right now. There's a couple of squads here to deal with. But that's not too much. Ozumu. I missed all this. Has taken a... A, a small lead, but if he loses his martyr VTSI, he could be back in the doghouse. And there we go, the rocket. And actually, it's still about even. Oh, there we go, Demone jumps up. And 30 Mott Schutzen's gonna run on down. If he can kill this anti tank squad, that would be huge. But he's gonna go for the Shosters from us. Better choice, it's the one that's gonna kill him after all. And Urban Combat at its best. Looks like the support vehicles here for the. The Mott Schutzens have been destroyed, and actually, with the cover, the Shastras from us are able to defeat this much, much larger, much superior squad. Position totally lost here by Ozumu. Ozumu! And he's kind of forced into a retreat. All the while, the middle base has been nullified, meaning there's no bonus, con no bonus materials coming from this, and each player has a two-point base. This means that this is going to be another low-point game meaning that we're going to see a lot of infantry, we're going to see a lot of small moves, and we're going to see micro, that is micromanagement, being the main decider of victory here. Now, once he destroys this anti-tank gun Malone F2, he will have an opportunity to move his T-72 and T-80 to come assist with his command armor kill. There really isn't anything else here but the anti-tank gun that can really deal with that tank effectively. And the only, actually the tow can probably help that the toe and so one rocket goes off complete and utter miss and yes I did say utter is that pronounced other there are two D's in utter so here's a weird little fact Demone sees everything well that's not so weird Ozumu can't see these guys right here can't see them it's impossible it, it creates an opportunity where you can prepare infantry in front of the enemy's face just because a weird little blind spot near there. He can see the bridge, but the second he steps over here, he just can't see anything. Very weird. And this is going to allow him to actually mobilize all of his infantry successfully and the infantry going forward. He's pull the other two ahead as well. He's unloading these ones first. I guess that's a good choice. I, that seems to be the thing to do. And he's going to go ahead and push all of his units in. He's got to get the anti-tank gun Malon. They're a very key unit right now. If he can get rid of them, he can bring in some tanks. Uh, but right now, it would be too expensive. They're actually out of rockets right now, so interesting choice. Mojo Strelke is actually going to get torn up, though. Just too many chasseurs from Moss, too many anti-infantry vehicles, and, uh, you know, just pretty low veterancy units, to be honest. And the scum of the earth, this squad most definitely going down in the cornfield. This is a cornfield, right? I'm not crazy, am I? Do they have corn in Europe? I don't think they have corn in Europe. I know they have maize, and that's a European word for corn. But do they grow corn? I don't think they do. I think that's just an oddity. And it looks like Ozumu cannot see this one infantry squad that survived, which is kind of interesting. Uh, now the anti-tank uh, Milan is out. The T-80 has moved up and firing from a very, very long distance. Able to do some pretty big damage. Another group of infantry going to move in. Will he use this infantry? Who knows? He might try and bypass, and this would actually be a fairly good move. To try and bypass these anti-tank gun monons and whatnot. Ooh, the T-80 killed. You see that in the distance? The toe that I was talking about definitely did the covering job. One shot of the T-80, and that gives a pretty sizable lead for a zoom move. T-80s are your 100 point tanks. They're very, very hard to replace. And Demone is a lot of trouble. With center being contested. With him only having this two point base. It's really, really hard to come back from big, big point losses like that. You gotta think that they will not be regenerating this many points. 
for probably another 10 minutes. And speaking of which, a pretty sizable hit there with the rockets. The rocket's hitting pretty much everything. The command armor is shaken. It only has one hit point left. And he might just forfeit middle off to Ozumu. Very, very bad situation. He needs to get a supply truck there now. Restock this thing. He's got to stay in middle. And... I just real feel bad for Demone. He could just lose it right here. All the while, there's some gazelle squads coming in. And if this Pazik Igula dies from another rocket blast, that's it. Speaking of which, um, pretty impressive game from Ozumu here. Oh my god, T-72 is running right into the flamethrower tank, and that would be that. It melted in seconds. I also have the game on fast forward mode. This is called your mid game in which people have just basically played all their opening moves and they don't really have enough left to do anything. Oh, by the way, apparently the command armor is now dead. Random rocket fire. And Demone, ugh, I don't want to declare an early victory yet, but it looks like Demone will have to do something really special come back. Oh, he is bringing in another command armor? That's not that special. And by something special, I mean a lot of these matches have been decided by people getting ridiculous numbers of helicopters. 12 to 16 helicopters. And then just using those helicopters, we're all inning. And when you're in this kind of situation where you're 800 points behind, it's time for some critical thinking. Speaking of which, looks like he killed another command armor with his random rocket fire. That's not good. So, not only is Demone behind, but... Oh, he's actually going to forfeit. Demone forfeits. Um, Ozumu will move on to round six of the tournament. And I have two more matches for the day. I'll be doing three matches non-stop until I clear the backlog from the weekend. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Peace!